Greetings in the name of the Lord. Aloha. Today I want to talk about following Jesus rather than following and copying the patterns of this world. It's a story of a family who are washing their clothes, uh, have a he heavy load because of a family vacation. And uh, all of a sudden, one of the daughters started to scream and shout because the water in the tub started to back up. And so as they were working on that, uh, as the parents was working on that, trying to help the daughter, one of the younger kids asked, have you guys seen my green lizard? And people were clueless, what green lizard? And then the father realized that he actually knew what the son was looking for is a little green lizard toy that when it touched water, it expanded to like 100 times its size. And so they said, we gotta go look for this little green thing. Uh, turns out that the little green toy lizard was actually in the in his jacket, the kid's jacket. He forgot to take it out and it got into the pipes and it started to clog up all these pipes. They tried everything to, to look for it to no avail, so they called a plumber and the plumber came in after $123 to resolve the problem and found a little toy. In Matthew chapter 13, in the parable of the sower, it says, Jesus says, in one particular soil, that the seed, the seed, which is the Word of God, which is actually Christ Himself too, that those of us who have Christ in our life, but if we're constantly seeking or worried about life's pressures, or we're going after it and copying, mimicking the ways of this world, it actually will choke out the blessings of the word in our life. It will not be able to produce fruit. It doesn't mean that it lacks the power to produce fruit. God's word is absolutely powerful, nothing more powerful than his word. But if we, as followers of Christ, we have Christ in our life, yet we are following the ways and the patterns, the, the behaviors, the language, the customs of the world, rather than following Christ, then the blessings, the destiny, the plans and the purposes that he has for our lives, that he has for our families, that he has for our ministries, our businesses, and ultimately the nations, it gets choked out. It gets snuffed out. In 1 John 2.16, the, uh, the Lord says to John, be careful that do not uh, give in to the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life, because this is not from the Father. And there's numerous verses in Galatians and Ephesians that describes the world as run and managed and belonging to the God of this age, which is Satan. Then if, if the enemy is the God of this age, um, then where is Christ? Where is his authority? Where is his power? Anything that is not dedicated and belonging to the Lord will be run by darkness, will be run and governed by the enemy. So as Christians, we got to make sure that our lives are, are dedicated to the Lord on a daily basis, that we don't just connect with Him, but we abide in Him, we remain in Him, so that we're not following the ways of this world. And we, so this way we can be uh, aware, making sure that we're not giving into the eyes of the flesh, uh, the lust of the flesh, which is we giving to our natural um, desires and cravings to where we only want to please ourselves and there's nothing wrong with having cravings like food but if we cannot restrain it it turns into gluttony there's nothing wrong with sex inside of marriage outside of marriage it becomes a curse uh, there's nothing wrong with having emotions well but if the emotions run us and control us and we cannot handle our emotions whether it's for for blessings or for anger those things not wrong but if we cannot manage it because we look into the world more than, than uh, looking to the Lord to, to lead us and guide us, we get ourselves into big trouble. Be careful of the eyes, the lust of the eyes. In other words, coveting, uh, jealousy, looking uh, what other people have and not appreciate, appreciating what God has given us and not being faithful with what God is giving us. Uh, nothing wrong to, to want a nice house. But if we're going to do it in a way that we uh, might, uh, in, a, in a way that it's not going to be pleasing unto the Lord, we'll run into trouble. Same with a job, with a car, with even money itself. But when it's misplaced, when it has a higher priority in our lives, then we, we put ourselves in dangerous places. And ultimately, 
uh, be careful for the pride of life. In other words, where we, ele we elevate ourselves above all others, including God. Mm -hmm. So I just want to encourage you, continue to follow the Lord. The Lord says, follow me. That's, that's the first instruction to his disciples. And it's the same instruction for us who call him uh, his followers. On the dailies, follow him. So may the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, Romans 12 verse 2 says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So often the way that we think really hinders us from moving forward. We actually limit ourselves from living the abundant life that God had planned in advance for us through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And a lot of times what hinders us from following hard after Jesus is really our own insecurities, our own frustrations, and our lack of understanding in believing the Word of God for our lives. And so, you know, it's it's funny how this has been a theme for um, our volleyball club, Ta'ahine Volleyball Club. The Lord had really placed this on my heart for this year and praying for this season is that we would fix, we would press on and fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Because when we get caught up just looking at our circumstances, looking at our lack, looking at what looks so impossible in front of us, then um, we, we get clouded. Our vision gets clouded from actually seeing. The enemy uses that to cloud our vision from actually seeing the good news of Jesus Christ being lived out and manifested in our lives. And so is following after Jesus difficult? Yes, it can be. Yes, it is. Why? Because the enemy doesn't want you to do it. He wants you to be miserable. He wants you to not know your full inheritance as a child of God. And he wants to stifle you from speaking and sharing and imparting the gift that you are in Jesus to this world around you. So, you know, in this time, 2021, new year, new season of life, new opportunities, or even same opportunities. But if it looks like you're on the same path of destruction or you, you cannot see the light at the end of the tunnel, somebody shifted in the relationship and it's not Jesus, but it might be you. Turn your eyes to Jesus, where he is. Get on the path that he has chosen for you. Trust him but for what he has for you. And don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, when you acknowledge his presence in your life, he will direct your path and make that path straight so you can follow him and what he has chosen for you. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord, uh, the Lord protect you. <laughs> may he smile on you. May the Lord show you his favor. And give you his peace. In but Jesus. you forget, let him be gracious to you. May too. the Lord be gracious. <laughs> May the Lord protect you. May he smile on you and be gracious to you. May he show you his favor and give you his peace. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Here's the reason why my mind, because as Becca's sharing it, you know, I want to say thank you uh, for tuning in, watching each week. Uh, but also want to encourage you that we have a weekly newsletter so you can subscribe to the newsletter where we, you will have insights, you would have tips, get updates, and every month get a testimony of how God, how God's people are actually um, following the Lord, all for the purpose of encouraging you, uh, providing comfort, but also uh, being able to empower you in following the Lord. May the Lord bless you. Amen. 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 God bless. Aloha. Amen.